Hey guys, John here. This is going to be the first video in the intermediate series, and what I'm going to cover today are functions. Um, and if we open up this C-sharp script here, all right, uh, what we have here is just our standard class, uh, which inherits from mono behavior. If you're not familiar, this symbol here, that colon, means inherit. So functions class inherits from mono behavior. Uh, and right here we have void start. Now that's a function, and we have void update. Now that's a function. Now commonly you'll see online that people refer to functions and then people also refer to methods um, for these type of things. They're the exact same thing. They're used interchangeably between the two. Um, functions come from JavaScript, methods come from typically C++. However, there's no difference. They all do the same thing. Uh, countless times in my videos, I'm sure you've seen me go back and forth between functions and methods and it's okay to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. So, what are functions? Functions basically allow you to group your code. To make it more neatly organized. So you can see here we have void start and void update. A good example of using functions is to basically clean up your update method. So for instance, say we had a whole bunch of movement code in here, right? So we had, for instance, just a bunch of lines of movement code, okay? Now it's never a good idea to clutter up your update method. I'm going to actually put this in a comment. So instead of cluttering up your update method, you can go ahead and create a custom function for it. So you can go and say here void and then a name of your function, so custom function. Now, what is void? Void means no return type. It means basically this function gets called, and then basically that's it. It gets called, it runs from top to bottom, and then it's done. It doesn't return anything, it doesn't do anything after it runs, it just runs from top to bottom. So it's a normal function. And then an update, you would call that function, custom function. So an update, that function is going to get called every frame. So that's a custom function right there. It's one type of custom function. One thing you can also do with custom functions is you can actually pass through arguments into custom functions. So for instance, say I had a variable for, say I had a function, okay? Every time I hit space, I want to debug dot log. Okay, let's do that. Let's create a program where every time you hit space, you debug dot log a game object's position. And in the game object's position is going to be this game object. So what I can do here is I'm going to create a custom function that's going to handle that and instead of it just being a void then you know no arguments I'm going to add a game object argument. So I'm going to go ahead and say void and I'm going to say and if you make it void it's private if I wanted it public I could say here public void. Um, I'm going to make it private. So I'm going to say void and I'm going to say um, tell me the position and I'm going to open up my parentheses and I'm going to add a parameter here. I'm going to add a game object parameter. And what this is going to allow me to do, and I'm going to just go ahead and name it go. So this can be a variable of any name you want. It's game object go, you know. Um, I can name it James. doesn't matter. But I'm going to name it go. So what I'm, I'm going to do here is I have the tell me position, and this function requires that I pass through a game object. So, and what I'm going to do now is the game object you pass through, just like with on trigger enter, it's stored in this variable. So you have on trigger enter collider other. Well, you have here, tell me the position, game object go. The game object you pass through this function is stored in go. And what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say debug.log, and I'm going to say um, position, and I'm going to go ahead and say plus game object go transform in the position. All right, now I need to use that function. So when I hit the space key, I want to call that function. And I want to pass through this game object. So I say if the input manager dot get key down, and then your key code. So let's get the space key. So when I hit space, I need to call my custom function. So tell me the position. And then look at that. The tooltip, when you open a parenthesis, says game object go. I want to pass through this game object. So I'm going to say this dot game object. You can also say just game object. All right, let's go and test that out. So if I go to the main camera, I'm going to go ahead and here I'm going to say functions, put it on there, and let's go ahead and run it. And if I hit space, you'll see position 0, 0, or I'm sorry, 0, 1, and negative 10. And you'll see that 0, 1, negative 10 is the main camera. So that's pretty cool. That's one way of using custom functions. I can also add multiple arguments. So for instance, I could say go, I could say uh, string message and then you can pass through a message with it so check this out I could say this dot game object comma and then it's looking for a message I'm gonna say hey there and then how would I make use of that I would say go dot transform position plus and I would say here plus my message by the way if you're not familiar with these plus signs they allow you to add on to strings they allow you to connect strings together pretty cool so if we go ahead and run this again ignore that email <laughs> 
If we go ahead and test it out, and there you go, my message is now attached to it. So these are no return functions. That means that you don't have to return anything. You just run the code and you're done. Now, what if I wanted to, for instance, do some calculations? We can use return type functions. So let me just go ahead and delete this. So basically, what if I wanted a function that's going to take two numbers and return what they are multiplied by each other, right? So for instance, I have a variable here called public int a equals 5. And then here, public int b equals 25, or I'm sorry, equals 5. I want to know what those two are calculated. Like, what's the calculation between those two whenever I hit the space key? Well, I need a variable for the total. So I say public int total. And what I'm going to do here is I need a function that's going to calculate those. Obviously, I could just say here, I could say total equals a times b, right? And then I just debug.log the total like this. However, you can also do it more efficiently with a function. So I'm going to go and create a function, and instead of void, I'm going to use a return type. I'm working with ints. So I say int. So I can say here public int, and then the name of it. What's it going to do? It's going to, it's going to multiply, right? So I'm going to say multiply. And then I need parameters. I'm passing through int a and int b. This can be named anything you want. And now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say return. In order for this function to be valid, it has to return something. It needs to return this data type, which is an int. So I'm going to say return value a times value b. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and say total equals my multiply function. And you'll see the tooltip says int a and b. So I'm going to pass through a, pass through b. I could also just pass through numbers. I could just say int a, as long as it's an int. So I could say, let's do 73 times 7. I don't know what that is, but we're about to find out. So if we go ahead and test it out, when I hit the space key, it's going to return an int value for total. And there you go, 511. All right, and I can also pass through variables. So I have my a and b, which is 25. a and b. And if we run that, and there you go. So 25, good stuff. OK, now, return type functions can be any type there is. So for what if we wanted to create a function that's going to take a game object that I specify and I want to give it a color. And when I hit space key, I want the color of that object to be red. So I'm going to go into Unity here. <clears throat> Ignore whatever that was. Uh, I'm going to go and create a cube here. So I have a cube. And right now the color is just default. And what I'm going to do here is I want to give it actually I want to give it a red color. So I could simply just say when I hit space key. Uh, the object is going to be stored in my prefab object, or here, I'm going to say cube. Alright, so <clears throat> if I go over here to my main camera, it's looking for a cube, so I'm going to go and take the cube, put it there. So now I have access to the cube through that variable. Now, when I hit the space key, I could just say cube.material, whoops, sorry, cube.getComponent, I need the renderer before the material, then the material, then the color, and I could say color.red. However, what if I wanted to do 100 else, you know, 100 different things with it, maybe 10 different things, whatever. I could do it more efficiently through a custom color function. So say I want to make the color red, right? Well, I'm going to create a custom color function that's also going to allow me to pass through a color. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and say here color, and I'm going to say um, change color. And I'm going to take a color parameter. So I'm going to say color new color. All right, and what it needs to do, the only thing it needs here is return new, uh, it's going to say return, um, <clears throat> it needs to return a color. So basically what we're going to say here is we're going to say return new color. It's going to be the color that you pass through in the parameters. All right, so it's a color type function, so it needs the return of a color, and when you call this function, you're going to pass in the color you want to change, and we're going to return that color. All right, so check out how this works. So, when I hit the space key, all right, I need access to my renderer material. So I still need to say, if, um, if I hit the space key, I need to say cube.getComponent. I need the renderer again. Then I need the material. And then I need the color. Now, instead of saying color.red, I'm going to go ahead and say here equals the color function. I'm going to say change color. And you'll see here, it's asking me for a color. It's a new color. So I'm going to go and say here color.red. All right. Now, if we go and test that out, I 
I hit space, and there you go, it's red. So how does that actually work? Well, you remember before how all I had to do was just say here, all I had to do here was just say color.red? Well, at the end of the day, that's what's returned. Think about it, in the parentheses, I put color.red, and that variable stores the color, and I'm returning the color. So it looks like this right now to the naked eye, it looks like that to you and me, it says change color and then I can pass through here color.red, but after the function gets returned, the only thing that's left here to the compiler or the computer code is color.red. All right, so it's pretty cool to do. Um, <clears throat> let me see here, change color and color.red. Now, what if I wanted to, um, let's say, what if I wanted to also change the object's name. So for instance, what if I want to go and give it a new name? So I want to say here, I want to take a game object variable. And I'm going to go and name it just go. All right. So and what I'm going to do with the go is I want to access the name and change it. So I'm going to say the game object you pass through and I need to change it to some name. So I'm going to say here a string and name. So now what I can do here is I can say game object dot name equals the name you pass through as a parameter. See that? So, how do we actually use this function now, is we can say equals change color, and I have to pass through a color I want to give it, so I'm going to go and say here, we're going to do color.red, now I need to pass through a game object, I'm going to say cube game object, and then I want to say, a mess. what do I want the name to be, so I'm going to say John, and if I go and save that, let's go and hit space, you'll see here in the inspector its name is cube, now it's John. All right, so that's just a little bit of what you can do with custom functions. They're amazing. Start using them. Use return type functions. Any type can be a return type. You just need the return keyword. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Looking forward to doing an awesome practical at the end of this series. Um, and thanks for watching. Make sure you guys are following on digitalgaminginstitute.com, my Facebook page, keep up to date. And if you haven't yet, go buy my book. The alpha is out on apress.com. I will post a link in the description. See ya.